and in this video we are going to mess with some colours. So in this video we've got an uh, image already set up and the exposure is pretty perfect on the image, we've got lots of detail on the face, it's spot on. So we've got an image ready, so what we're going to start with is curves adjustment. The curves adjustment are perfect for colours because they give you more control than just other, uh, some of the other methods that we have available in Photoshop. So here we have the highlights, the midtones and the shadows. Each of these will interact differently with the image and they're perfect because they allow us to create different effects. So if we pulled up the shadows for instance, we create a washed out look. And if we pull down these, we've got quite a muted colour look. And then we've got the midtones to play with obviously, which is always nice to look at. So they all create different effects, but however we're going to be colouring in this image. So what we're going to do is we're going to play with this figure up here. So we've got the red, green and blue. These are each of the layers of the colour. So if we go with blue, however, this is usually where we start on an image because it's usually quite good. It creates different effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to push up the blue shadows. So it's all these black images, but all black images of them. Uh, there we go. Added some blue into the shadows, and this is quite a nice, quite a soft thing. This is quite a classic look that everyone goes for at the moment. So, just add that in, try not to be too harsh with it. And um, opposite up here is where we can add in blue to the highlights, or we can pull it down and add in the opposite of blue on the color wheel, which is yellow. So, here we start to add yellow into the highlights, which is creating this quite nice. Blue and orange, a blue and yellow look, which is quite nice. So, try not to be too harsh. We're gonna play with these and see what looks good. So, that's starting to look quite good. You can see here. So, we're starting to build up the color layers here, and that's starting to look quite good as it is. What we are gonna do is play with the mid tones, maybe. So, here we can add in blue to the mid tones, which is all this bit here. It's not too dark, all that hair and everything here. So, there we go. We start to add it in. I don't really like the look of adding it in. Maybe let's pull it out a little bit. So it's starting to create a more yellow look, which is quite a summary look. So remember, this isn't the final image, so we're going to be building upon this. So it's good to play with. And maybe adding a little bit more blue. Beauty of these curves adjustments is you can go back and change them at any point if you don't like the image. So there we go. I quite like, I quite like how that's building up already. So remember we can change the opacity here as well, so we can lessen the effect later on if we don't like it. Right, now finish with blue now, up to red and green. So we're going to start with red, I usually go blue, red, green. And here we can add red into the areas of the image. So I'm going to add some red into the mid-tones here, using the exact same principle as we did last time. And red's starting to create quite a nice summary look here, so I like that. Um, what we might also try is adding a little bit of red into the shadows. So we can change the feel of the image here. Um, I don't want to overpower it, but maybe just a little bit, just so we can start to see it coming up here. This is quite a vintage look that we get out here, and if we add in the top here, we can add green into the highlights because green's opposite red on the color wheel. And so, I personally don't like this look, but a lot of people do use it. So, something that you're aware of, you can also add red in as well. So, you have to affect in here, which is quite good for a... something again. I'm not quite popular, but I quite like this. I don't personally like adding green into it, but. I quite like the summary look it's creating here. See, so I'm building up another layer. So, if again we go to green, we can change the look of it here. So, we're going to add some green in. Uh, red there. So, it's all just about playing. Every image is different, so every image acts a bit differently. But I don't think I'm going to make any adjustments to the green there. So here we can see on the image that I'm building up quite a nice summary theme already. Uh, there you go, colouring starting to look up. So that's curve adjustments done. So we're going to leave them as they are. I don't want to uh, turn the opacity down. I quite like how they are already. So what we're going to move on to next is uh, solid colour layers. Solid colour layers are quite good because we can put a solid colour over the thing, but we can change the blend mode so it um, interacts differently with the image. 
So here we go down to the adjustment layers and we click solid color. Now to start with we're gonna I want quite a nice mm, quite a nice warm summer image, so we're gonna go for some pink. Uh, not I quite like that color actually. So here we go. So we're gonna change the blending mode here so it acts differently with the image. So I'm gonna go for soft light. Soft light's a really good one to use because it's slightly less harsh than pink then overlay but it interacts with the image good and you keep the colours. Uh, so there we go. See how that's interacting already. It's added the nice warm feel but it's added it over everything so it's added it uniformly rather than just in the mid-tone shadows or highlights separately. So it's added it uniformly which is quite good. So here we're going to play with the opacity because we don't want to overpower the image. So playing with the opacity here seeing what looks good. We don't want to overpower it but I think something around the 20-30 mark is going to look quite good. There we go, and we can toggle on and off. That's quite good already. So it's not overpowering it, but you can see the difference. Right, maybe a little bit less actually. Right, there. So next layer, we're going to go and we're going to use another solid layer because they're really useful. But this time we're going to go for a nice, maybe a peachy kind of colour. That's looking quite nice. Right, now this time we're going to use a screen layer instead of a soft light layer. Screen's quite good because it makes, again, it interacts differently with it, but it has quite a lighter feel to the image. So you can see this already. You can see the shadows and the outlines here. It sort of create a bit, creates a nice light interaction with the image. So if we again pull down the opacity, opacity is everything here, and we can see that we've created a nice washed out look almost. Quite popular with the vintage thing at the moment. So there we go, that's looking quite nice. So don't worry about losing in, uh, detail, these are usually quite good at keeping a lot of the detail. This is why I edit it like it is, it doesn't lose a lot of detail in the image, it's not destructive. You can go back and change it any time. Like for instance here, we've got the peachy colour, but we could go back and we could change what colour was actually added. So we could add some purple, or we could add some green to the image. Green's working quite well actually, because it's creating a nice light lightness to the image and uh, we can add orange. I don't want to overpower the orange and the reds in the colour we in the image we've already got quite a few already so I'm gonna go for something peaky again. Um don't want to go too dark so I want to I've already added quite a few dark layers. But all everything is still in the image so let's check that. Mm, make it a little less harsh. So, see how that's affected the image. So, what you can see already if we group all three of them together, holding shift down, and we can select them all together and then place them in the group, we can see how we've edited our image already. Now, I'm quite liking the look of where. There we go. I'm quite liking the look we've got already. Here, we could change the opacity if we didn't like the effect or just wanted to lessen it simply. So there we go. We're starting to bring in a really nice, uh, quite a modest theme. So, the idea is throughout my editing is not to overpower the image and create something that didn't happen just to make a better outlook on it maybe. So here we get in quite a nice summary image. So I'm going to leave it at 100% because it's not too harsh. It's been quite good and quite modest. So you're adding it perfectly. Nextly we're going to add in some curve adjustments again. So this time however we're going to use just the red, green and blue channel and we're going to add in an S curve so we can add in some contrast because I didn't play with the contrast at all in RAW and the camera shoots quite uncontrasting so here we're going to add in some contrast which should hopefully influence the colours again so it's going to embed them into the image so here we're going to step down somewhere in the middle between midtones and shadow so we can add some darkness into the image and then up here we're going to add in some lightness so if we start about here see how we've pulled it down quite a lot here and we've created a lot more colour, but we're still keeping the colour, but we've created a lot more depth and some richness in the tones. And here we're going to create, an, oops, create another layer and we're going to pull them up. See, now we're getting quite a summary image. See, we've overexposed here and we've got some deepness here, so and it's interacting with our colours quite nicely. See, that's a perfect image there, which is quite nice in its own actually, but if we just wanted to add a little bit in. Now it's quite harsh here. Maybe we could pull down. 
can see how we're creating quite a more of a modest image, but quite a summary theme, something you couldn't have got normally, and something you can't usually get just by adjusting the temperature gauge in raw, which is not a good way. I always prefer to stay away from that. And um, see, now we're adding quite nice, see how it interacts. See, we could always adjust the curves here. So I could always just choose to maybe get rid of it so it's not too contrasting. Again, being modest is generally always the best thing you can do in an image like this because you don't want to overpower it. A lot of the time you get overpowered images and they just don't look very good. So here we go, apply it again. I quite like the way that's turning out. I quite like the darkness actually, but we don't want to overpower it. So yeah, stay about there. Quite like how it's affecting the overexposure here. I learned to play almost. Um, that's looking quite good. I always leave the contrasting adding to the last because I like to see how it influences with the colour. If I add it first and then go and change on, it's the same process really, but I always like to leave it to the last so I can adjust it. But again, with all these layers, you can change them later. So there, I think that's quite good. We see it from the start, uh, we see it afterwards. Oops. Curve layer, contrast layer needs to be at the top. Quite like how that's affecting. If you, there we go, and we could have changed the opacity, but I think it's all looking pretty good. So I'm actually going to use this image. I really like how it's turned out. So thank you all for listening. This is uh, www.downwall.co.uk. If you visit us there or on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash downwardphotography.com.